Hey guys, God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, I just wanted to come on here. I had a brother of mine ask me a question about the fall and uh, the Garden of Eden and why did Adam sin. And I thought we would, I would just come on here briefly and kind of talk about that. Firstly, I want to say this. I am not your teacher. Um, everything that I say, I want to encourage you to go back to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is your teacher. Your Holy Spirit will the Holy Spirit will reveal truth to you. Um, I I can only share with you what I understand and believe at the moment, and so I could be wrong, um, but I'm going to speak about speak the to the best that is within me so having said that um, let's talk about the fall before the fall occurred everything was perfect God had uh, created the heavens and the earth the his he, he had water in the seas he had the the land he had the stars in the sky uh, he filled the planet with um, with life both sea dwelling creatures flying creatures and and land animals and creeping things and then he had man that was uh, that came on the sixth day and God's estimation in Genesis chapter 1 of all of that, at that point, he said in verse, in verse um, 31, I'm reading from the King James Version, he says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Now, this is the first time that we're that he's describing something as far as I understand it as not just good but very good right and before that he said he saw that the light was good uh, he saw that the 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 earth was you know the the land was good but after all of that create all of that creating and man finally came he said it is very good so if it's very good then it's got to be very good god's word is true right so he created man in in this world and he says that he placed the man from where he where, where it says um and he took the man that he had uh let's see it says in verse 7 in chapter 2 says the Lord God formed man of the dust of the of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul now what I understand is this is a recap of what happened in Genesis chapter 1 in just a little bit more detail and the Lord God verse verse 8 says the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed so he took man and placed him into the garden. Now that means that man was not created in the garden, but he was perhaps created outside of the garden and placed in the garden for a specific purpose, which is to keep it and to guard it and to work in it. But still, God's estimation at this point is that it's very good. Sin had not entered the world, um, as as Romans will tell us that will, that will happen later. Uh, there's nothing that is of a fallen nature. Everything is very good. So God's relationship with this man is very good. Um, God told this man to to have dominion uh, over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every creeping thing that creeps, and over all the earth. 
he gave him dominion over all the earth. That was very good. So the the garden, which means with the garden of Eden, which means paradise, is in the so the garden of Eden is is a paradise. Uh, we find out later on in the, uh, Ezekiel that the the serpent uh, or or the, the 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 devil, the enemy, was found in the garden. Uh, that he was in paradise. Uh, in Revelation, we find that the tree of life is back uh, in play as, as a tree, it seems, it, but it's here on earth. So is it possible that paradise is on earth rather than in heaven, which is something interesting to consider because heaven is not just, especially nowadays, it says... Um, that the kingdom of God is in us and that the heaven is basically in us as well oh, that's something to something to consider because paradise is obviously in a place that had um, man and God in a communion where there was nothing broken nothing nothing broken their relationship was was completely perfect so if their relationship was completely perfect God gives him a command and he says, don't eat from this tree, which is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It doesn't say anything about the tree of life. He says, you can freely eat from every tree. And when he said freely eat, it's eating, you may eat. It's like a, there's, it's, it's, there's an emphasis on the fact that you have freedom to eat from every tree except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So if it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil... What knowledge did they have? That's a question that we need to ask, right? Um, we find out later on in the scriptures that the 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 knowledge and wisdom of God is that's from above is you know peaceable and gentle and and uh, you know all these wonderful characteristics and yet the knowledge from below is sensual, devilish, you know and 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 lustful and so man without God is at its man without God at its core is with the knowledge of man is basically devilish uh, to a degree so anyway so what knowledge did they have did they have knowledge of good and evil or is or is it when they ate from the tree that they would have knowledge of good and evil is that knowledge of good and evil really not saying knowledge of good and evil, but knowledge of evil because they had already knowledge of good? And if you're going to say it's that, then is it possible then they're going to have knowledge of good because they already had knowledge of evil? Uh, obviously, that's backwards because we know that what they did was in disobedience to God. And yet, God created them and everything was very good. So why would God's creation question another aspect of God's creation? Is it possible that instead of the fact that they questioned God's creation, they didn't take stewardship of it? What was God what did God task Adam with? He tasked him with taking dominion over the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, over, over every creeping thing that creeps. And over the entire earth, did the serpent, which which was described as more uh, the subtle than any beast of the field, is that something that that Adam should have had dominion over, and therefore because he should have had dominion over, and he didn't exercise his authority or his stewardship, is that possible as to why that? that um that fall happened I don't, I don't know that's something to consider i'm just speaking here guys so i you know i apologize it's, this is not me rambling but these are questions that i'm asking these are things that i'm, I'm considering and because we're taught all our, our lives one thing 
and yet someone else can come along and that person has something else that they believe. So if everything was very good, why would they have reason to believe that they couldn't trust something else from God's creation? I mean, after all, all the God brought the animals to Adam so he can name them. So he had already given them names. So he had already he had already the animals had already been presented to him. And so if the animals had already been presented to him, why would he have to fear um, or, or why would he have doubt or reason to doubt a beast of the field that had already been presented to him? That's a question. That's a thought to consider. Now, one of the things that I'm thinking about now is that Adam was the one that named the animals, right? Um, Adam just means man, earth, right? Red. So the woman was was the woman there when when the beasts were named? I don't think so because it says there was not a a companion found with uh, there was not a companion for Adam, so that's why he caused the deep sleep to come on to him. And then woman came from the from the rib. So <clears throat> what caused adam to sin that's the question that we're asking right if everything was very good what caused adam to sin now it says that the beast or that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field um in that subtlety That subtlety caused, you know, this subtle, this beast, this serpent, is described as deceiving Eve. So if someone is deceived, do they have a choice to be deceived? Are they choosing to be deceived? That does not make any sense to me, that I would choose to be deceived. I think in order for me to choose to be deceived, I'd have to be, I'd have to have knowledge of the deception, and therefore willfully choose that. And yet, man did not have knowledge of good and evil yet, but they were deceived. Adam and Eve, on the other hand, were one. So, is it safe to say that what happened to one happened to the other? The fall happened to man. Woman was man also. Not, not, not. I think you understand. Mankind, whatever you want to say. So, if man was deceived, then what is it that? that entered how how did this man get the nature of the serpent god created man in his image and in his likeness um god is spirit god is light god is love um, god is righteous all these aspects and characteristics of god it's possible to say that that was the same as Adam, and yet Adam was corruptible, which is crazy to consider because I don't believe that Adam willfully chose to disobey. I think that he was deceived. I think because when woman who was his helpmeet was deceived, um, his help me presented to Adam uh, something 
presented to Adam this fruit. And so this so then why would Adam question his help me? Did not God give woman to man for a reason and not for you know for a reason to be to be a helper? It's funny because Eve is described as the help me the helper of Adam. And then we have the Holy Spirit, who's described as our helper. The funny thing is that with Eve, Eve was tempted towards something that would not be profitable or, or beneficial or would not um, be... Um, The Holy Spirit would not is not going to bring something to us that's going to be detrimental to us, and yet, just like Eve, the Holy Spirit's our helper. The Holy Spirit is only going to search out the deep things of God. It's only, the Holy Spirit's only going to reveal truth. The Holy Spirit's only going to bring us and present something to us that's going to be of a, of a godly nature, that's going to edify us and build us up. Eve, the first helper, um, did not do that with man. Eve, who was the helpmeet of Adam, um, presented to some presented something to Adam that was not of a of a godly nature, was not of something that was going to be beneficial to man. In fact, it was part of the whole downfall of of man. So, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything was good, good, very good. He told Adam and Eve. He told Adam to have dominion over the earth and over the, all the beasts of the field and fowl of the air and fish of the sea and what have you. Their relationship between God and man was perfect. There was nothing hindering, nothing broken, nothing lacking. They had perfect peace. They had just, um, just a, the, it, it was just a sweet time with one another. And then the serpent comes along and deceives Eve. Uh, Eve and she partakes in the, the 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 fruit of the knowledge of from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She gets to her husband. He partakes in it, and then God said that when that happened, then that day that they're surely going to die. Um, something had to have occurred, because we know that Adam lived to nine hundred forty-five. I think I forget what it is. Nine hundred forty. Um, let's see, nine hundred uh, and thirty years. So Adam lived nine hundred thirty years, and yet the day that he ate thereof, he was surely going to die. Romans tells us that sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so that death passed upon all men because all of sin. By one man, sin entered into this world. So on the day that he ate thereof, that one man, Adam, ate sin, death, entered into the world. And, by, uh, and because of that, all men has sinned. But it started with one man. It started with this one man, Adam and his wife. The serpent deceived Adam. Uh, the serpent deceived man. And death entered the world. Is it possible that that death is that nature of death? Is that sin nature? It's not that. Um, it's not the. It's the sin was not the act. The sin was the corruption of the nature. Is that possible? Because when we believe on Christ, we get a new nature. We no longer have the corruptible nature. We get a new nature, which is a nature in Christ, which is his nature. We're one with him, whereas he is in this world, um, where, whereas he is now, but in this world. So, how what is sin? In the Old Testament, sin was what you did, or sin was what you didn't do. In the New Testament, sin is, is a fruit of the nature that's attached to it. Um, or, or sin is the is is the corruptible nature, 
So, um, I don't know if this made any sense. I hope it did. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, leave a comment. Let me know if this makes any sense to you um, whatsoever. But I think that the question is, is that what is what is sin? How did sin, um, if sin is no longer an action, um, let's see. Adam was not able, was he was not created to sin. He was created for God's glory. Uh, and yet, he was deceived, and by his deception, sin nature entered into the world. It says sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So by as a byproduct of sin, death entered into the world and everything that leads up to it. So God didn't give Adam a bad heart. But the deception corrupted his his good heart. It says many people say uh, Adam sinned and Satan became God of this world. I suppose that's true, um, but it also says that Jesus has all power and all authority. So is it possible that when the Scripture says that the this, the enemy is the God of this world, it's not it's not literally the God of this world, but he's he's the God unto men of this world. Does that make sense? In other words, we, if 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 the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit, and God is spirit, and the enemies uh, of a spiritual nature, um, we can't. The natural man can't understand the things of God, and so if they can't understand the things of God, they're not going to necessarily expect to receive the good things from God, and so therefore, they're not going to be aware of the deception that the enemy has on them. So, I think the root of disobedience is found in is found in the nature, and that nature became uh, corrupted because God promised that when they ate, they were surely going to die. Just like the God was emphatic about eating any tree except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He was he was emphatic about. And the day you eat, you're going to die. You are absolutely going to die. There's no question. And uh, I believe that that death is the corruption of the nature. It's the sin, uh, the, the fleshly nature, the, the nature of man, uh, the nature of the enemy of God. Um, but, but thanks be to God that he sent his son Jesus Christ who, who died uh, on a tree so that we, we can eat from his fruit <laughs> just that's funny um and live so i love you god bless i hope this makes some kind of sense leave me a comment uh about what you think or how i can make these videos better love you god bless